This past Sunday marked the six-month anniversary of Israel's war with Hamas in Gaza. I was lucky to spend nine days in Israel touring around when we reached this historic milestone. It was a surreal experience, to say the least. On one level, Israel is completely the same. Tel Aviv is full with people having fun at cafes, at the beach, enjoying unseasonably warm weather. But at the same time, the country is very different. Israel's never had a war lasting this long. There are soldiers everywhere in the streets. There are civilians with guns on their shoulders. There are posters on every street corner, every wall throughout the country of the over 100 hostages that are still missing. Everywhere you go, people are scurrying to buy food to put in their bomb shelters. They're worried about the potential for an attack by Hezbollah from the north in Lebanon or Syria, or even now from Iran. And people are protesting, they're angry. They want a change in their leadership. They're convinced that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has not only dropped the ball when preventing the attack by Hamas on October 7th, but they feel perhaps he's even extending the war in order to retain his, his grip on power. I went to a protest in Jerusalem last week. Thousands of people were there. Many had been camped out for days. They were screaming, Bibi Netanyahu, which is the nickname from, for the prime minister, Bibi, you must go. It is time you left. People are angry. People are sad. People are in despair. At the same time, Israel is facing challenges inside. They're facing serious charge challenges abroad. The Biden administration, although has made clear that they steadfastly support Israel, they want this war to end. Last week's killing of seven aid workers in Gaza by Israeli forces, the workers part of the World Central Kitchen, helmed by Jose Andres, the killing sparked outrage across the world and prompted President Biden to demand Israel reduce the number of, of civilian casualties in Gaza and wind up this war. At the same time, countries across the world are beginning to question whether they're, they're going to continue to arm Israel. This is a precarious time for the battle in Gaza. Israel still has yet to enter the southern city of Rafa, which borders the Sinai Peninsula and Egypt. This is a strategic and crucial city if Israel wants to remove the Hamas threat, as they've said. But at the same time, the U.S. has made clear that the tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of civilians in Rafah must be protected and Israel must find a way to do so. Rafah is also most likely to cite uh, Hamas's senior leadership, particularly its chief leader in Sinwar. Israel is a country that wants their citizens back. Everywhere you turn, people are, are screaming or crying to bring back these hostages. But the question is, can they be returned alive? And if Israel invades Rafah, will many perish along the way? The biggest question for most Israelis now is what happens in Jerusalem? There's pressure on Benjamin Netanyahu to resign, but he refuses to do so. At the same time, opposition forces have been demanding new elections. Netanyahu exists in a precarious coalition government that could fall if a minimum of parliamentary members defect from his government. It's unlikely that that will happen in the meantime, but right for right now, Benjamin Netanyahu is a leader in battle, both at home and abroad. Israel, as it enters the second six months of this war, is looking for change. People want an end to this war. They want their soldiers home. They want their hostages home. There are 100,000 Israelis who've been made internal refugees in the country who no longer can live in their houses in the north because of the Hezbollah threat. They're staying in hotels throughout the country. Many are enrolled in schools. The parents are trying to work, but they want to come home too. Nearly a third of the country is empty. Folks have been telling me that these communities are now overrun by wildflowers and wildlife because nobody's living there. This cannot continue. Six months after the war in Israel, things are, look exactly the same, but they can never be more different. But most importantly, Israel's a country that now feels like it's almost permanently at war. And this permanence is what Israeli citizens fear most.